Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Tess if you are new here and today we are going over some healthy snack ideas. I did faux tan this morning so sorry if I'm looking a little, you know, dark. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather but you know hopefully that doesn't come across. So, healthy snacks. First one. First up is some kosher dill pickles. You know sometimes you just forget about snack options. So maybe these are really just healthy snack reminders for you. But I love these organic kosher dill pickles, USDA organic. All the ingredients are super clean. Obviously there's no sugar. I mean it's basically cucumbers, vinegar, and salt essentially. I'm not really sure what kosher means. But I almost feel like it's even more healthy. Because isn't kosher meat like killed a more humane way? Which obviously we love that. Should I convert to Judaism? I love eating these plain when I just want a little something and I also like to chop them up. I like buying them in spheres because it's easy to eat them by themselves. And I like to chop them up and put them in maybe some tuna salad, maybe some egg salad, whatever I'm feeling. Along with the jarred items, some organic pitted olives. These are so good for you. These are full of healthy fat. All there is is some organic red wine vinegar, organic oregano, and organic extra virgin olive oil, which olives is where olive oil comes from, which is also why olive oil is one of the best, most healthy oils you can eat. Because if you squeeze an olive, that's essentially olive oil that comes out, which is what you cook with, versus all those really highly processed seed oils like sunflower oil, vegetable oil, corn oil, peanut oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil. Those are the oils you want to stay away from because they are highly, highly processed. Just how whole food versus a processed food, think about that in oils, right? They are a processed oil versus a real whole oil. That's why they're not as healthy for you. This is why we stick to olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil. And I know the names are confusing. You know, corn oil, vegetable oil, they sound like they could be real, just as real and whole and good for you as the others, but they're not. Next up, I've been eating these. I mean, just cannot get enough of these. Keep going to the store to buy more because now they're coming into season, like for real, for real. Some organic raspberries and blackberries. Maybe you prefer blueberries. Maybe you prefer the strawberries. Maybe you're not a berry person. Maybe you prefer a banana or some other type of fruit. Berries are actually the lowest in natural sugar out of all fruits. Hold up, except for, except for maybe like an avocado or a tomato, because aren't those technically fruits? Let's Google that. Checking. Oh, here's an interesting list of the lowest sugar fruits. According to this, number one is lemons and limes, two raspberries, three strawberries, four blackberries, Five, kiwi, ooh, kiwi is so good. Six, grapefruit, seven, avocado. Man, avocados, they have so much healthy omega-3s, all that healthy fat. We love an avocado for a healthy snack. I was gonna include that. Anyways, so I'm including it now. I'm gonna put a picture because I don't have one. Love adding it to salads right now. I'm not a really big avo toast girl these days. I think I got sick of it back in the day, so I don't really do that anymore. Let's see, is tomato a fruit? It says it is as well as squash, pumpkins, cucumbers, peppers, eggplants. Interesting, enough about that. Berries, man. They're just, rinse these off, throw them all in a bowl, eat the whole thing. And the thing about these snacks, you don't feel bad after eating them. And even if you eat a super large amount, you still don't feel bad because they're actually good foods for you. We love colorful foods. Colorful means antioxidant rich. Something I love to put my berries in. So this can be more of a meal or it could be a heftier snack if you are really hungry. That would be some non-fat Greek yogurt. I love this brand, Fage, Fage, Fag, who knows? Personally, I just love the plain Greek yogurt, no flavoring, no vanilla. I don't really like the artificial sweetened flavored yogurt. It just doesn't taste good to me. To me, it tastes way better. Adding some berries and some honey. Mmm, so, so good. This is the Fage, Fage, Fag, however you say it, who knows brand. To me, this is the best non-fat 
Greek yogurt brand. I think it tastes a lot better than the plain Chobani one and a lot of the other ones that I've tried. Give this one a try. This is the 5% milk fat. I really like them all. I like the full, the fullest milk fat, I like the no fat at all. Mm, so good. Like I said, with some honey and some berries, you can't go wrong. Same thing with cottage cheese. If you have not tried the Good Culture brand cottage cheese, y'all. Actually, I want to go to the store right now and buy some because it sounds so good now that I'm talking about it. It tastes like dessert. Like just plain. Whether you get the lower fat one or the regular fat one. It is so rich and creamy and fluffy. It is not runny. It is not that runny cottage cheese you grew up eating. It's like fluffy and thick. The texture is so good. Give it a try if you haven't had cottage cheese in a while. Once again, high in protein. Of course, get a non-dairy option if you can't tolerate dairy. Give cottage cheese a chance. I'm telling you, a good culture brand slaps. So I really don't keep much of the pantry for me personally, especially because I work from home. I feel like I don't have a lot of good excuses to not be able to eat more refrigerated items. It is harder if you don't work from home, of course. Me personally, I find, you know, the only thing I'm keeping in the pantry a lot of the time is chips and processed food. So for me, I like for my pantry to be very light and not have a lot in it. But this is one of my pantry items, it's my nut jar. Where my, it's not really a jar, but it's like a container of nuts. And it right now, which I'm almost out, I have walnuts and pecans. I love adding those. I love adding my walnuts to my yogurt with my berries and some honey. Oh, that little salty crunch, so, so good. I don't buy any nuts that are salted. It's extremely hard to be self-limiting with nuts when they are salted. And we all know nuts are high in calories because they are high in fat, but once again, it is healthy fat. But that is why I like to buy the raw versions. And in the raw version, walnuts are my favorite. Pecans are probably like second. Ooh, pistachios. Oh my gosh. The way I can down a bag of raw pistachios, you know, the deep shelled already, so you don't gotta do all that jazz. So good. It is interesting, isn't it, how nature really created everything to be self-limiting. Nature just is perfect already. That's why nuts all come in shells because it's a lot of work, you know? And it would be hard to actually eat a bunch of those in the wild. But with walnuts, I find I can just come in here and grab a few and I'm not going back for more because, because like I want them. Like I'm so satisfied with just three, four walnut shells and maybe a couple pecans. That really satisfies me. It's kind of like my salty snack, but I never want to go back and just grab handfuls. That is my tip for snacking on nuts. Because if you buy one of those planters jars with all the salty saltiness with the cashews, the peanuts, the almonds. For me personally, it's all over. It is all over. I've eaten two thirds of that jar the second I bring it home. And then the next day it's gone. You know, I finish it off. Not that that's terrible, but when I go to the grocery store and buy foods, I prefer for them to lasts a little bit, and I prefer to get most of my calories from protein, not just fat. And so that is my tip. Just buy the raw versions and then figure out which of the raw versions you like the best and that you find the most self-limiting. Try that. Working from home, the double-edged sword, am I right? Because like I say, on the one hand, I have no excuse to not be able to fix myself food grab something from the fridge. Sorry I keep looking in the viewfinder. It is really hard for me to look at the lens. I don't feel like I have a great excuse to not do those things, but at the same time, working from home, if you are surrounded, sorry, there's something on my lip. At the same time, working from home, if you do have a pantry full of processed foods, I think it's difficult to not indulge in those. That's why I personally try to not keep those things in my pantry. Okay, let's see, what's next, what's next? Is it? Okay, yeah, it's recording. <laughs> tuna, baby, let's go. Tuna. My roommates used to call me Tuna Tess in college because I would eat a lot of tuna because you know, I didn't have any money at all in college. I, I lived off tuna for lunch and green beans for dinner. Weird times. But now I'm back to the tuna grind because it is so good and so efficient, so high in protein. 
23 grams of protein in this one packet. This is wild U.S. line caught, packed in America, albacore tuna. When it comes to seafood, you want to try and buy the most sustainably with the seafood market. Look for this certified sustainable seafood, MSC. It also says wild caught, dolphin safe. But look for that label. A lot of times, seafood that is, you know, Alaskan caught or even U.S. related, the U.S. does have some of the higher sustainability practices in regards to seafood um, globally, I believe. Pretty sure about that. So look for those. I like to buy wild caught because it is gonna be healthier just as grass-fed, grass-finished meats are going to be healthier for you versus grain-fed. It's kind of the same thing with seafood. Just the way that you can get 46 grams of protein. I'm sorry, what? And omega-3s. Oh, seafood, it just really gives life. And let me show you what I make it with. Okay, well, I gotta show y'all that I'm like <laughs> a real person, you know, obviously I still eat plenty of bad food. If I didn't, I think I would, whatever. Let me show y'all what I make my tuna with. Primal Kitchen Mayo made with avocado oil. Just as I mentioned earlier, avocado, coconut oil, olive oil. These three oils are the ones you want to stick with. Am I still recording? Okay. These are the three oils you want to stick with because they are naturally derived, unlike the highly processed seed oils. So we have a mayonnaise made with avocado oil. Let's go, baby, let's go. Honestly, it tastes really good. One tablespoon is 100 calories, no added sugar. I mean, let me read you the ingredients. Avocado oil, organic eggs, organic egg yolks, organic vinegar, and organic rosemary extract and salt. I mean, does it get any better? No. So this is what I make my tuna with. Of course, I'm from the South, so I still have a thing of Dukes. Cause you know, sometimes I combine the two. A little devil on the shoulder, a little angel on the shoulder. Devil, angel, devil, angel. And this is a little bit more fluffy, but it is made with uh, soybean oil. One of the worst, soybean oil is one of the worst highly processed refined oils. But you know, it's hard. It's hard growing up in the South when everything, every salad is actually made with Duke's mayonnaise, tuna salad, egg salad, broccoli salad, macaroni salad. I mean, I think, I can't imagine how everyone in the South must have lost their freaking minds when mayonnaise was invented because they started putting it in everything. I'm gonna stop ranting about Duke's. I just, I do love it. I use this a lot, I go through a lot of these. It is expensive, forewarning, but such an awesome alternative to regular mayo. When I make my eggy salad, I usually, I'll show you what I usually eat it on. Wait, did I just, did I just say eggy salad? I meant tuna salad, but I was gonna talk about eggs too. This is, I keep my Dave's Killer Bread in the freezer. I'm running low. This is the bread that I like to buy. This is the only bread I buy. I don't keep bread in my house. Unless I'm like really in the mood. You know how sometimes you just see like a really delicious, amazing, perfectly put together sandwich. And you're just like, I need a delicious homemade sandwich. Maybe that's just me. But when that happens, I go to the grocery store and I get this like rosemary sourdoughy. No, maybe not sourdough. I think it's like a rosemary French loaf. Ooh, come home, I toast it up, and I go all out with like a real good sandwich. But in general, I really don't keep bread in the house, except for this. This is organic, non-GMO. I'm sure you've heard of this. I feel like a lot of people use this. It is one of the healthier breads. 110 calories in a slice. I'm not really too concerned about calories personally. There's five grams of protein. Just one of the better options. But I love toasting this up and maybe putting some tuna on that. These are some really awesome grain-free crackers that I really like to use. They're called Mary's Gone Crackers. I think they're in most grocery stores now. They used to only be at like Whole Foods. So if you are someone that has to be gluten-free, check these out. I believe these are Bobby approved as well. If you know who Bobby Flav City is, it's a great follow for getting clean ingredient items. He also has an app where you can just go through the grocery store and scan stuff. That's what I'm about to do and see if it's Bobby approved. It's like someone being able to tell you all the ingredients in something, whether it's good or bad, rather than you having to know all the ingredients. So you just scan. 
Honestly, Bobby should. <gasps> and then see, it tells you, Bobby approved. Love that app. Yeah, these are great. And then I'll be completely honest, I'm out of Ritz crackers right now, but I love using Ritz crackers, seeing my tuna on. And this is a new discovery. New discovery, okay. So kimchi and sauerkraut are supposed to be really, really good for you. So good for your gut health. I've never really eaten either. I mean, I'm sure I've had sauerkraut on like a hot dog or something before, but so I got this sauerkraut. Fermented foods, baby. So good for your gut health. Like 10 calories and one ounce. And it's green cabbage, garlic, kosher salt, and black pepper. The other day I got a little crazy. I made myself some tuna salad. I put it on some Ritz crackers, add a little hot sauce on top, and then I put some of this on top. And it was really, really good. And then I Googled it, and it's like a thing, like tuna salad and sauerkraut. So I didn't know that. But it's a thing, and it's delicious. So if you're like me, and you're trying to get some fermented foods into your diet, definitely try that. Let me know if you have any other ideas for how to get more fermented foods in your diet. Please, please let me know. Obviously, I don't have any hard-boiled eggs right now. These are some local pasture-raised eggs that I've got from a local farmer. Eggs, I mean, another thing that a lot of time turns into lunch for me, but such a fabulous snack. I mean, you cannot go wrong with hard-boiled eggs. Like I said, I usually keep both. I usually have regular eggs and hard-boiled in my fridge at all times. Such a great snack, such a great on-the-go breakfast, running to the gym, need something, a little salt and pepper on it, mm, so good and something else that I love to mix with my primal kitchen mayo. Then add some salt, some pepper, a little garlic powder, onion powder, a little paprika, you know, a little spice, and whip you up some egg salad. Mm. These are like my go-to lunches, like tuna salad and egg salad, and a lot of other things, but those are really quick ones. And then once again, I love spreading it on a toasted piece of this or eating it with crackers. Oh, and what I love to add on top of my tuna salad, sometimes my egg salad too, some pepperoncini peppers, I don't know, I just think they taste good. Maybe that's not a great recommendation because I don't know you could really snack on those, but they're not spicy at all. This probably goes without saying, but I love adding some organic Dijon mustard to my tuna salad and egg salad. Obviously, mustard, there's nothing bad for you in it, especially organic, super low calorie. This is like, this is another condiment that these are like, to me, two guilt-free condiments. I had to just add this great snack idea is obviously some grass-fed whey protein or if you are vegan or vegetarian whatever the organic type of protein is of your choice this brand called levels I really like them I've mentioned them in another video the ingredient list on this is just so small and I don't have an autofocus camera so it's really hard for me to show but I also have a thing of first form in there and the ingredient list takes up this much room Whereas this ingredient list is like so tiny versus that. I mean, there's so much stuff in my first form powder that I have no idea what it is. Not to shade first form. I think they do their best to make really high quality products, but I just don't think it's beaten levels, okay? I'm just calling it like it is. I love throwing this in with just a frozen banana that I have in my freezer. Always have frozen bananas on hand. A little almond milk or whole milk, whatever I'm feeling. Add a little cocoa powder to make it more chocolatey. That's a really, really quick protein shake. You can obviously just shake it up with water in a blender bottle, or you can go all out and make like a full berry chocolate smoothie. I mean, I've done so many different types of smoothies, but I love having protein powder on hand. I don't have any with me, but I did want to mention, of course, apples and peanut butter is a great snack. I went through a phase where I was really enjoying that, as well as celery and peanut butter. For my peanut butter, I do have Jif in my pantry right now, not gonna lie, because it's just so good. But really, you should look for peanut butter where the only ingredient is basically peanuts and salt, because Jif and those other ones do have highly processed refined oils in them. Also, of course, veggies and hummus is always a great go-to. I personally love cucumbers. Mm, nothing is better than a cucumber and some hummus, or my favorite, in that ranch dip packet mixed with Greek yogurt because it basically tastes like sour cream. Even though sour cream really isn't bad for you, it's just high in calories. Whereas with the Greek yogurt, you're gonna get lower calorie and more protein. But such a great option for something to dip veggies in, to snack on, 
So I wanted to mention that. Last thing I wanted to mention is this Poppy Prebiotic Sodas. I have a few different flavors. I like to keep this in my fridge, especially for if maybe I have a friend over and they're drinking, but I don't feel like drinking, but I want to still sip on something. This does have four grams of sugar, as well as apple cider vinegar. I think that's why they call it prebiotic. But I find this to be really sweet. It's organic cane sugar that's in it. So if you're someone that struggles with sodas and you're really trying to wean off of them or something, but you find seltzer hard, or not hard, you find seltzer waters not sweet enough because, let's be honest, those would be better than this because those have no sugar, but maybe they're not sweet enough for you. Definitely give this a try because to me this tastes very sweet. So you could try going towards these and then after these maybe doing a seltzer water if you're trying to get off sodas. One last thing, I do love Lily's chocolate. They are sugar-free chocolate. I love the dark chocolate. I really like all their flavors, but the dark chocolate is my favorite. I think it tastes the closest to actual dark chocolate, which I do have some of that in my pantry as well. I find, once again, dark chocolate to be very self-limiting and satisfying at the same time. This is sweetened with stevia and erythritol. There was just a bunch of hoopla about erythritol. Do your own research. I think it was all unfounded. I think erythritol is probably fine. We still don't even have that many studies on it. It is a sugar alcohol. I don't know if I said that already. I say give Lily's chocolate a try if you are wanting a sugar-free option. Wow, I'm hungry now and I have not eaten dinner yet and it is 7.37. So I'm about to go make some dinner and I might just make me one of these. Or do I make some collard greens and a steak? Because your girl loves collard greens and I got a bunch in there I need to finish making. We will see. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you would like a part two to this video and I can give you some more snack ideas. I can also give you a full on meal ideas. I think that'd be really fun to do meal ideas or a what I eat in a week. Please like and subscribe if you did enjoy this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.